Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Saturday morning real estate marketing show with Ruthie Rocks, Ruth Albrand, and I am Marketing Max. This is show number 261. And Ruth, uh, I guess uh, the show, the theme today is spread the love, <laughs> spread the love today. Uh, today, we have a special guest. Uh, Marie, have you been on before? A, a couple of times. A yeah. couple of times, right? Right. We have a returning guest, Marie Herod from Equity Title. Uh, she's going to share with us. She's been in Vegas here now 26 years. So she's seen this town come from almost absolutely nothing. Not quite the, the horsey uh, going across the Las Vegas strip days quite yet. But, uh, you know, she's seen this from probably Rainbow wasn't around probably back then yet. Uh, but uh, she's been around this town for a long time, been a long time in title and escrow. And she works now as an account executive at Equity Title. And she's going to share with you with what's happening around, you know, the new situations with real estate and what we got to do to change our businesses to operate in this period of time, how that affects real estate and the title and escrow process. So, but before we get to Marie, Ruth, what is happening in Las Vegas? I am going to uh, report on the stats right now. Um, we've had some interesting shows lately about uh, how Zillow has impacted our market. Um, so not so much uh, this month, which is a good thing. And um, what we're seeing is we have 6,798 available homes. And I, I love that number because that means uh, that we've got uh, more than 5,000 available single family homes. Hmm. And we don't want to get too low because we get into a bidding war, prices go up. Um, it doesn't become a pretty outcome. So the good news is that we have listed 250 homes uh, yesterday. And we put 118 under contract. That's okay. excellent. Congratulations, all these hard workers out there. And we did 129 closings. So we, you know, we our first our first real week in, in August. These are this is where we are. And if you look at the year to date, um, we're still down about 11 percent from last year year to date. But that's by the end of the year, I'm sure that's going to be under 10 percent. And right. for what we've been going through, the, the COVID, uh, I don't think that's a bad uh, a bad number at all for the real estate. That's uh, not a bad economy. number at all. No. And for August, we've sold uh, 604 homes versus last year we sold 742. So we're, we're still a little down from last August. And everybody knows in July, we jumped past last July. So for the first month in, uh, since um, March. So March, we were ahead of last year. And then uh, May, April and May, we were below. June, we were a little bit below, but August, we surged ahead again. So that is really good news. And the, um, the iBuyer platforms, Last year in August, they had sold uh, about 92 uh, homes and this August only 30. So COVID has oh, wow. definitely had an impact on their business. So last year they were 12% of our sales, everybody. And uh, this year they're only 5% so far oh, in August. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. And, and I don't do the year to date till it gets uh, maybe mid August because it really isn't a, a true picture. So I don't like to do that. The other thing I want to show everybody uh, regarding the iBuyers is if you look at the ranking report here, you know, you see that uh, George Caprios with Zillow's office uh, is number two, only um, outpaced by the non MLS, uh, the people who are buying and flipping and what have you. And if you look down here, you'll see uh, Zillow open door, you'll see where these people are offer pad. And I post this in the uh, group. So that'll be in the group later. So will the stats. One other thing we want to uh, talk about about the market is NARS saying that we're the comeback kids, that the um, housing markets have recovered the most since the start of the pandem pandemic. And there are uh, about 10 of them. And I'm going to show you those. And I'm excited because guess who's in there? Las Vegas. Number eight. I yeah, see. we're number eight. Uh, so these are the markets that have recovered the most since the beginning of the COVID-19 crisis. So this is really cool. We're in the top 10 and uh, I'm real excited about that. Um, the average 
or the median price across the country has increased during this time period. And uh, surprisingly so. Yeah, it's in July, it rose to an all time high of 349,000. That was nationally. Locally, we're at 325, which is good. Mm -hmm. I don't want yeah. to, Max and I have the same philosophy. We don't want it to get too high or the average homeowner in Las Vegas won't be able to afford our homes right. in the event that we get, um, to 375. I think that's the number we figured. So yeah. we don't want to get up there because then the average homeowner in Las Vegas cannot afford to buy a home in Las Vegas. So I just want to say a thank you and then we'll get back to Marie. Um, I got this beautiful orchid <laughs> from one of our uh, class members. Oh, we had yeah. our, our premier Facebook ad class this week. It was awesome. Everybody really uh, enjoyed it. Uh, we learned a lot about uh, how we're going to do our next class, which will be September 16th and 17th. And uh, it's, it's just a, it's a fire hose of information in a short period of time. So we have two review classes, uh, the two weeks following the class so that everybody can uh, regurgitate and then figure out what right. they don't know and we can help right. them. And try to okay. execute, which is yes. key. Yeah. So let's get on with our guests today. Here she comes. Oh, what happened to her? Here she comes. There she is. Hello, hello, Marie. Hi, Marie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank Good morning. you. To your comment, though, Ruth, I mean, I think real estate's probably going to continue to rise here in Vegas simply because, I mean, the new bill of California, they're trying to raise state income tax to like 18% on the high end. What is That's it now? It's 13 on the high end. So, I mean, they're, they're looking to stretch another 5%. Um, and so, you know, overall, if you look at that, it's 13% plus the 35, I mean, we're looking at like almost 50% taxes, uh, in California, if you, ha you know, are at the higher end of the market in income. So well, we're, we're going to have a flex. A our, we're seeing a lot of our sellers coming from California or our oh, buyers here. Or buyers, here. correct. Yeah. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of that. That correct. was one of our questions because I know one of, there was an agent who was working at the DMV that I talked to. Um, and she said that the, they're still pouring in those, those license driver's licenses from California are still being turned in more right. than ever. She said, well, the ones that aren't getting turned in. So that number is probably even skewed a bit because if they haven't really been able to get into the DMV yet, that number is probably higher than what they're even recording. Wow. wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hello, Miss Cookie. Great morning and great. Good. Hi, there's a uh, kitty. Hey, kitty. Look how, Cute, you're looking at that hat, adorable. And then Frank's with us this morning. Good to see you, Frank. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks everyone for joining us. So Marie, yes. what's your feel of what's going on on the real estate side from an escrow and title side oh, at this my point? Goodness. We have been super busy, but um, you know the, the rates are so low. So yeah. buys have really just been kind of off the charts. So I know for us personally, but I also know for a good amount of the other companies in town, the last few months, they've, we've all hit records um, over last year. Wow. Um, I know we had 400 more closings in July than we did last July. Uh, sorry, 400 more openings. We had 200 more closings in July than we did last year. So <clears throat> I credit a lot of that to refis, mm -hmm. um, but with rates the way they are, I mean, we're seeing, I had one the other day that was under one. That's not true. Under two, it was one point yeah. nine two five one something like that. So right, like wow, pretty amazing. Yeah, a lot of in the twos. Um, I got a signing at ten o'clock today, and it's two point six two five. So great, great rates out there. Um, you know, rental rates are right are rising, and so with interest rates going so low, trying to get some of those folks into homes. Um, but then you run into the risk of the inventory kind of being low. And as we said, the affordable housing, you know, thankful for some of these things. There's a new development in Summerlin that's going to be kind of in the high twos, some triplex, duplex things. Um, and so those are really, gonna, yeah, those are going to be for those wow. people that can have that affordable housing. And like Ruth said, if we get too high up there with respect to what folks are getting paid, it's going to be tough for some of those first time home buyers. I think I read. No more now is it 2,500 square feet for a first time home buyer. It's more like 14 to 1,500 square feet. <laughs> right. And that's that's yeah. the bad news uh, about pe so many people coming from California. Now we're turning into, you know, California home prices with sizes now. 
A little bit, a little bit, yeah. But super busy with that and and trying to help realtors. You know, our whole um, technique has changed. We're kind of like technicians there for a while. We were getting emails every day, as you guys probably were from NAR about, well, now this has changed or this has changed. So, yeah. you know, it's just very fluid. And we've kind of gotten to a point now where we're pretty stable. But all the companies are doing a little bit different from plexiglass to protect the consumers when they come in, limiting who comes into a signing. You know, used to the signings were a party. They brought their kids and their family. And for some people, that was it's a huge accomplishment for a family. And so it's a big deal. And so that's tough to tell somebody that, you know, you can't bring your family to your signing. And sure, so, sure. Um, so just kind of changing quite a few of those things. The remote online notaries are now a thing. Um, hmm. That's amazing. How, um, how's that work now? So you're doing it just like we're doing it through a video. Um, oh. They have to be able to upload their driver's license. So depending on your consumer um, and their comfortability with technology, um, but you know, $45 for a seller to probably just do a deed notary um, and do it right online. Lenders aren't really on board yet with the loan documents and such, um, but for a mm -hmm. seller who's out of state, you know, some of the sellers, they live in other states. These are second homes that some of them are getting rid of. So easily to send them that stuff and $45 for an, uh, an online notary is pretty, pretty good on the pocketbook as opposed to what some of the companies are charging to get those notaries done. So no remote online notary, I think almost every title company is probably on board with that. Um, there's training that all the escrow staff have to take, um, testing that they have to do prior to being able to do that. Um, but most of the title companies, they've got their escrow officers um, in that process to get started. And so if they're able to do it, that's awesome. Again, saves the seller um, a, a little bit of money and it's very fast, very easy to do actually. But again, if your seller is somebody who's not comfortable with that, then we go back to doing it the old way. So. So when you, when you do it online, what platform do you use, Marie? Um, there's a couple of, there's a one called Perveso um, that you can use. So some of them are, it isn't like a typical Zoom because you have to have certain uh, securities and whatnot right. when you're doing that. So Provost, I think it's Provaso is how you pronounce the one that, one of the platforms that we use. And can the uh, agent uh, be there as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that's really cool. Yeah, that's a super cool thing because agents do want to be involved. And yes. so that's even been something now, you know, we it's we um, kind of lightened the reins on that a little bit. But initially we weren't even having the agents come to closing. And for me, after as many years as I've done this, that's a big deal because I, I see a lot of agents that don't come to the signings. And so um, when agents do want to come and they do want to participate, that's a big deal. So we're happy that we were kind of able to loosen those reins a bit. So now that the realtor can can come into that signing. Right. So sometimes there's mistakes on the paperwork and <laughs> the, the part of the realtor and why the lender should be there too, because they need to double check and make sure the numbers all match. Absolutely. And you know, it's interesting. It's, um, it's, it's the very low percentage of lenders that come. Agents mm -hmm. are getting better. Um, I did a lot of the builder transactions back in um, 2000, 2001, before the builders decided that they were going to kind of open up their own title company. Um, and so I did a lot of those transactions. And so it was amazing to me on new construction, um, the agents that would just call and say, hey, has my buyer signed? Is my check ready? Um, because I think from the builder side, they just kind of feel like there isn't a whole lot I need to do. But it's the same thing. It's still a seller. It's still a net sheet. It's still options mm -hmm. that they paid for, or maybe not paid for. So it's exceedingly important for the agent to be involved in that process. I liken it to baking a cake. And so you put it in the pan, but then you never put it in the oven. So kind of <laughs> that last, that last <laughs> what you do right. for which then the end result is that sweet piece of cake. Well, your end result hopefully is a great closing with a great referral from that client. Well, but Feeney says for every closing, you should get two referrals. And that's how you that's how you double and triple your business. Absolutely. But so many agents, yeah. a lot of them trail off on that part. They look at the settlement statement prior to closing. It looks good. I don't need to go to the signing escrow. We'll do all that stuff and explain it. Well, we're not a part of the transaction. So right. we may not know yeah. some of the intricacies that you might know. So it could cause us to make a phone call that's not necessary or, you know, delay the signing because we're trying to figure something out. So I always say, like, that's your time to just be thankful that it's done and it's over. And, you know, you've got somebody in hopefully the home of their dreams. So 
Yeah, it's a big deal when they can come. When we teach Buffini, I always say this is the beginning of your work is when you go to the closing. Right. Because now you're going to be uh, communicating with that buyer or seller or both, you know, um, for the rest of your career. Absolutely. So this is the beginning of the work with personal notes, pop buys and uh, sending items of value, staying mm -hmm. in touch with them. And this is like. Oh, by the way, you know, do you, if you know anyone who wants to buy or sell real estate, please, you know, uh, get them in touch with me and I'll take them. I'll take as good care of them as I've taken of you. And you're there, awesome. you know, you're, and so that that's so impactful. Absolutely. And not only that, I mean, the, the, that downtime that you're sitting in the, the escrow signing, there's so much downtime, probably like, you know, between the escrow officer writing back with paperwork and stuff like there's five, 10 minutes that you get it's there one building relationship, but two, one of the things from a referral standpoint, if you're, if you're uncomfortable about like, you know, doing the whole, you know, who do you know type of question <laughs> that uh, a lot of people tell you do. I mean, one of the other things is like, have a template ready with an email and you, do you know, you know, can you introduce me to like two people that you yeah. think potentially could be looking at buying or selling real estate mm -hmm. within the next six to 12 months and, and do an introductory email. Everybody has their phone now and they can access their email on the phone and literally you can have them, you know, copy you on an email, send them an email with a template, put the names of the people, do an introduction. And now you have another person's email and another person's contact. And, you know, you do that two times, you know, get two on average every, every closing, uh, your database will grow to that magical 1000 number in no time. Right. Yeah. So well, you know, we have so many new agents still coming out of real estate school. And so this is a really tricky time for them because mm -hmm. a lot of them are coming from, jobs where maybe they were in a cubicle, you know, they weren't used yeah. to networking or trying to go out and get business. And so um, it's really been tough for them through this process because, you know, agents who've been in the business for a while, they at least have their sphere, right? So they at least have people that they can go back and yeah. chat with and check up on. But when you're new, you're just developing that. And so, you know, if you're if door knocking, nobody really wants to go door knocking. You've got to have the six feet. And what if they're sick behind the other door? And so there's coming up, you know, having to come up with ways that some of these new agents can still keep their energy. They can still do some marketing that's fairly inexpensive because they're new, right? So they don't have closings coming in. But if you don't keep them excited and interested, then they're just going to go find a job when they can go find a job because they're right. just not going to be able to do it right now. So I feel like we all have worked harder during the pandemic because we've had to figure out different ways to do what we're doing. It's not just been so easy to pick up the phone or, hey, I'm going to drive by today and visit some of my sphere. Yeah. So we have had to come up with different ways to kind of maneuver through all of that um, and get comfortable with you know, calling on the phone and checking in. And some of these young kids, they're, they've they never had to do that before. So I'm just like <laughs> elevator speech classes to like help them get their scripts down. You know, anything that will make them comfortable. We've been role playing with objections because, you know, you're going to get them. And if you can conquer those objections, you can talk to anybody. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. it's that fear of, I don't know what they're going to ask me and I don't know how, I'm sh how I should respond. Exactly so right. A lot of role playing with the new agents, a ton of education for them. Um, just to keep them excited and interested so that they do stay in it because some of them are going to be great. Um, but it's always been that same rule. You got, you know, 20% of the people doing 80% of the work. So, <laughs> so how, how um, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but how, how have you changed the way you approach your marketing by reaching real estate agents, you know, during this time, obviously, you know, just dropping by doing the drop by office visits is not, not at um, all. You can't do that really at this because one, it's even now even more of a mystery if anybody's going to be there. Right. So what right. have you done personally in, in your business to you know, market yourself and get out there and stay active in front of real estate agents? You know, I tell all these agents when I meet with them, I just taught a class of the day, the power of prospecting. And I said, I prospect just like you guys do. I cold call, but I have to cold call agents. You're cold calling consumers. I'm doing the same thing. I get objections. No, thanks. I already have a friend at XYZ company, but thanks anyway. So um, for me, video um, is probably my new wave of pretty much doing anything. Um, Zoom has been around, just we never needed it. Um, and so now it's been so easy to get with some of these newer agents. It's been so easy to kind of go through the showing them how to farm or doing one-on-ones with them, working on their business pages or their LinkedIn pages. Um, you know, if we didn't have that, we wouldn't be sitting in an office doing it. So it's really being, like I tell the agents, consistent, coming up with a plan, how many calls you're going to do that day, how many posts you're going to do that day, you know, really working on your website. 
um, so that it is inviting, working on the content that you put on your social media so that you get engagement back. Um, so we've really been focusing on doing some more of that where we didn't really have to in the past. I could walk into right. an office and see 30 people. And now, um, you know, most of the offices are requiring the agents to wear a mask unless they're in their physical office. So a lot of them go in the office, they shut the door because they can take their mask off. But a lot of the agents that we would see just kind of in the middle general areas and prospecting on phones and whatnot, they're all at home because... Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have to wear a mask at home. They're more comfortable. It's easier to talk on the phone without having to do that. So we've really had to go through the calling, the texting, the videoing. Um, I do. St I still go to the office. I drop by. I leave little things on the door just so they know I was there. I know they're popping in. I right. um, really have had to kind of figure out totally different ways to get in front of them and get, get our information out, you know, whether email drip campaigns, all that. So, Marie. I Go excuse ahead. me, Go ahead. excuse me, Max. So, Marie, you know we have our training center, and I'd like to know what class you would like to come and teach at our training center, and we'll get you out in front of people. And we also do a Zoom, and we usually get between fifty and seventy people, and we usually get about ten people in the classroom because the classroom is a size where we can social distance, and people want to network. They want to be in that classroom. So, if you if you have some dates that you'd be available in classes, I'd love to know so we could. If you could uh, want to come schedule. Uh, Absolutely. What? I think I, in the past three months, I think I've written and recorded 13 classes. Wow. Um, so they're not CE. Um, they're strictly educational. Um, but for these new agents, it's everything from the power of prospecting to how to effectively network a room um, when we're able to do that. Um, we did an, I wrote an elevator speech. I just wrote a virtual open house uh, class. I did that last week for an office. So um, I, I, I enjoy doing that. I enjoy the education part of it. And um, I, the virtual open houses, I love open houses and I love to do them with realtors. So I sit with them on Sundays. Um, I help them promote it. Um, and so the virtual open house piece for me is so exciting. Um, I'm actually getting ready to do one down in McNeil Estates in a couple of weeks. It was the former house of Artemis Ham. Hmm, who's that? Uh, the Artemis Ham Hall at UNLV. Okay. So Artemis Ham Sr. Um, was a big attorney in town years, I mean, years and years and years and years ago. There's uh, there's actually four, Artemis Ham the fourth. So he's had, had some children. Um, but the house is in McNeil Estates. The bones are amazing. Um, however, the house is a little bit of a hot mess. Um, and so... Um, we're going to do a video, but I pulled the history of the house and the history of Artemis Ham because that's what I want to focus on. So I really enjoy doing that kind of different stuff because we can't just hold a regular open house. And if that's the agent's chance to get engagement and get people, then I truly want to be able to help them kind of maneuver through the best ways to do that. So are you going to hold it at the house yeah. and it's a virtual tour? Is it yeah. a teaching? Is it a teaching experience? Um, well, we're going to do it through Facebook Live. We're going to create an event um, so we can get a great target audience, send out invites and whatnot. Um, so it's not going to be a teaching of how to do it. Um, I do that through the class. So when I do the Zoom mm -hmm. class, we talk about how to get set up, how to have somebody do it with you. Um, I was on one last Saturday, just jumped on because I was on Facebook. And so the agent was kind of asking me questions about well, where do I go next and which room. <laughs> True. And so I thought, well, you probably shouldn't be asking me that while you're doing it. Um, you know, the toilet lid was up, the closet door was locked. And that's authenticity. I didn't write a class on that because I don't think that's probably how we should have done that. <laughs> so, so Marie, uh, Debbie wants to know, do you record those classes and can they go back and see them? Absolutely. I have them all on Zoom. Um, and so I can just email them the link and they can certainly uh, sit and watch them. Some of them are about an hour. None of them are more than an hour. I think the virtual one might be about 40 minutes. Um, I'm with Equity, Frank. And and uh, Debbie wanted to know uh, how to get in touch with you. Uh, my cell um, is 702-203-3518. Um, I work seven days a week. So you need net sheets. You need, like you guys, <laughs> um, you need net sheets. You need help with some property information. I'm, I'm available all weekend long. <laughs> I can tell you one of the things that Ruth and I talked about four years ago, actually, when we right, like three before we started the show, but the the power of video texting right now, I, I think is going to be even more so 
powerful. One, because people still are still afraid of doing like off the cuff videos. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, if you're a loan officer right now, you know, looking to build relationships with agents and escrow officers, one of the things that you can do is like, you know, instead of doing in, in this company called core training, they tell you to do like on Mondays, do 25 calls to real estate agents and set meetings, right? Now you can literally text. I mean, you can find cell phones of real estate agents so easily online. Now. I mean, they're, they're the, the one group of people that just, just put it out there in the ether. And like, like they want people to call them all over the place. But can you imagine getting a video text, something that's just customized with their first names? Like, hi, Marie, it's Max over at, you know, XYZ, you know, loan company or title company. Just wanted to make sure you're doing okay. You know, yeah. checking in with you. I'm available here. And by the way, I'm doing this X, Y, Z next week, blah, blah, blah. I'd love you to come. You can learn this, 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 and this. Yeah. I mean, and to say that, and then they can see you, right? Because they're not getting that. I can tell you, we've been talking about this for years now. And I, I yet to, you know, see a, a loan officer do this for a real estate agent consistently. And I can tell you, you do that now. People are, the great thing is people are willing to listen now because they got nowhere to go and all they're doing is looking at their phone and your response time is so much quicker when you do that you know you almost exactly right. get a thumbs up or a thank you or something to that effect as opposed yeah, exactly to exactly right they go to junk mail you know we have the ability um in, in, in for a realtor to kind of do the same thing for the consumer so you know if you're holding a virtual open house in a neighborhood we can get you emails and phone numbers so you can do the same video text letting them know that you're doing an open house virtually um, there's signage that agents can get now that say virtual open house in progress. Right. Um, you know, when you're doing those, you're also um, interviewing, being interviewed by the whole neighborhood because Absolutely. the consumer wants to know how are they selling houses these days? How are people seeing these houses? So Absolutely. when they see an agent that's advertising a virtual open house and doing a virtual open house, you know, that's them interviewing you for their future potential listing. So right. um, all that stuff and that stuff is free. So again, for an agent to say, gosh, I'm brand new. I don't know where to start. Get some emails and phone numbers. You know, right. if you, don't, you know, I have an agent who's scared of the ring doorbell. She's, you know, people yell through that. They're loud. Well then send emails. <laughs> don't go door knocking. Send emails. You know, you have to get what you're comfortable with or you're not going to do it. Absolutely. So, yeah. You got to understand your own personal, you know, preferences and and do what you thrive in. Absolutely. And and I think the video text, I I want to implore every even real estate agents. I like your idea too of doing direct to consumer. It's like okay. and it seems less spammy when people can see your face and you say their name and you introduce yourself and you you know do the things that Ruth talks. Still educate, entertain, engage. Okay. Right. I mean, you, you got you got a component. It can't be like, hey, I'm the greatest real estate you know, agent yeah. in town and, you know, it has to be right. And it has to be relevant. And there's so many contextual things that you can incorporate now that offers a human touch to, you know, like that live video that I can tell you is going to be so powerful. If I got a text right now from a real estate agent in town, it's like, Hey, I, I just sold the home in your neighborhood here. I wanted to introduce myself. And by the mm -hmm. way, you know, what are, what are some of the things that you're doing to protect and, and, and provide safety for your, for your household, right? right. Here are three tips or here's a well, link. Or branding too, right? They're recognizing your face. So Absolutely. If you do ever send them something in print. Oh, that's the, that's the guy I keep getting videos. Right. From. So it's exactly that right. process of realizing and knowing who you are. No, absolutely. absolutely. Well, the new, Max, this can be the new postcard campaign. The it it really campaign. is. Right. You know, it, it really is. And I'm telling you, loan officers, escrow title companies, you know, with real estate agents, I'm telling you, you do this consistently over time and they see your yeah. face with like, you know, engaging or funny or something that makes them laugh or, or whatever video. Cause you know, everybody can delete a text. I mean, if, right. if, People are concerned. I like, got. Oh, they might get annoyed with me, but well, if they don't know you, they're not going to do business with you. Period. So you have nothing. You know, gain nothing. Nothing venture. Nothing gain there. Exactly. So this is the time to do it and get practice because eventually this is all going to come subside and we might go back to the normal way of doing things. But this will always remember. be an option. Yeah, there's always, always be an option. It's always going to be an option. And there's something in our brain when we see somebody's face and we talk to them versus just getting that text message that just is Absolutely. there's just something there that clicks and you can feel and you can tell the kind of person you know we all can talk with a buyer or a seller and within 20 or 25 minutes or even less we kind of have an idea of what that transaction is going to be like <laughs> in 30 or 40 days right, right. Exactly <laughs> Marie, right. Marie in class I always tell everybody video and we have two two green rooms now and i'm and i'm like um are you still watching 
uh, movies, <laughs> you know, video <laughs> has been around and it's not going away. No, it's not. It's not. And so I'm just thankful that people are getting more comfortable with it. But it isn't something natural for a lot of people to talk about themselves. So yes. when you're writing those elevator speeches or you're trying to come up with that speech, sometimes it's odd for people to want to really talk about themselves. Um, and so, you know, finding something like you said, Max, that's that's pertinent, that is about the market, that's about their neighborhood. It could even be something that, hey, we've got something new coming up the street. We've got, you know, new oh, commercial yeah. coming up the street, new shopping. Just keeping people kind of attuned as to what's happening in their neighborhood. You know, even the the monthly stats of appreciation in a neighborhood. Um, yeah. you know, you can get all of that. And that's what those people want to know. You know, they may not care what's happening over in Green Valley if they're in Summerlin. So keep your stats really consistent with that area. And right. people will tune in all the time because they're not going to hear about another neighborhood that they really don't care about. Exactly so. right. And if you get really in tune with that neighborhood and there's issues that you see, you know, or, you know, some of the problems people are having right now is like HOA um, companies are kind of in flux right now. Yeah. Uh, and that's a topic they can bring up in the video. And if they have a problem or an issue, they're like, oh, I do have that. And they, they end right. up either reaching out to you or at least they attach you to something that like is pertinent to their neighborhood with a solution that they can possibly search out for. It, I mean, I, I'm excited for this time. You know, I, Ruth, I know you were excited three years ago. I'm telling you right now, She's the, always the, excited. the people who are willing to work, right? You're going to have to do more work. I mean, right. I, because the, the learning process of this new way of doing business is going to take some time to, to have you ramp up. But for the people who've been, you know, doing videos and advertising on Facebook and doing that. I actually saw equity title, a few equity title ads on Facebook for a while. You guys stopped kind of doing that. I don't know why, but the, the ads were starting to get good. I'm like, okay, you know, they're, they're starting here in Vegas here. So this is pretty yeah. interesting. We've got a schedule I think, for the whole rest of the year. And you know, something funny that has come out of a lot of this video and zoom. So as I said, I love to educate and I love to do buyer seminars, seller seminars. And sometimes when you do those in person, you guys have probably noticed, and I, as have I, you don't get a lot of people. Sometimes they think right. they're going to get twisted and they're going to end up buying something that they didn't buy <laughs> on. So, but I've done a couple of borrower seminars. We've been able to get renter emails. We've been on Zoom, which is a very safe place for them to still come on and get the information. Mm -hmm. but they're registering, so the agents have that email information from them. But it's a little safer because, hey, if I just want to leave the meeting, I can. Um, but they're at least getting that information. They're getting the agent's information, um, having a lender on to speak, an appraiser on to speak. So we've had some success with some of those renter seminars, um, just filling them in on the different down payment assistance programs and kind of what's happening out there. So it's a safer place. And so people aren't as fearful. So we have been getting a little better turnout for some of those kinds of educational community events where in person they've been a little on the low side. No, absolutely, because it's so convenient. You can hop on in your pajamas in your bed. You don't have to go anywhere. And and now that you know that the entertainment world is not producing any TV shows or, you or movies, right? right. You, you, you become <laughs> the entertainment now. You know, if it's educational and if they're looking to buy a home in the next two three months, or like. I got nothing else to watch. Might as well hop on this uh, educational thing and see if I can learn something that exactly. can buy a house, you know? So, I mean, this is one of the best times. I mean, this pandemic has caused, you know, the acceleration of, of this remote marketing and videoing and, and reaching out. It's going to, the people who are going to really take this really seriously are going to, you know, benefit and learn from this and just hit the ground running again, you know, with another option, another way to reach people that, you know, most people are afraid to do for oh, whatever absolutely. reason. You know, so, I mean, this is exciting times for people who are willing to do the work. Right. That's actually my old number, Ruth. Okay. That's what I want oh. because that's just so you know, that's what's on Facebook. So you might want to go in and change it. I feel like I have a million times. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that. What is it? 203-3518. 3518. Let's see if this is it. See if I got it right this time. But yeah, that's uh and they also would like to know your email address. Is that it? Uh, that's perfect. And it's Marie H uh -huh. at equitynv.com. And they can text me, call me, email me. Mornings, yeah. evenings. If I did this right, because I can't see what I'm typing. <laughs> Marie. You H. got it. Oh my gosh. Look at you. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm well, I've, been, I've enjoyed this. And again, you know, I, I love working with the new agents. I love the experienced agents because we're in such a different time that even if you've been around for a while, this is different marketing for you still. So, you know, it's just something a little bit new for everybody. So I'm there to figure out what you got going on and how I can jump in and assist with that. And so uh, I'm hands on. I'm also a free notary. So I do go out for any of my agents who need their clients signed. They don't even have to come to the office. Um, so specifically buyers, because that Ron is not the lenders aren't quite on board with loan docs signing through Ron. So um, I'm there to help them and save them a little bit of money on that. Yeah, and I want to give a shout out to you, Marie, because uh, four years ago when I kind of started this whole marketing thing for real estate, and I was actually a loan officer before. And mm -hmm. one of the you know one of the ways for me coming back, you know, from not doing loans for a decade and then building credibility with the real estate community again, mm -hmm. um, you know, my focus was not going out and and teaching people about rates and and uh, and programs right. because everybody knows mm -hmm. about that already. My I was like, how do I reach these real estate agents and and have them come to me? Well, let's teach them how to market. Let's educate <laughs> them. And so we started doing these YouTube videos. <laughs> Excuse me here, I, my nose is running. But uh, to your credit, Marie, um, you know, you I, I called you. I think you were like my second guest. Uh -huh. Excuse me on, on the show, and you were volunteered. And here you are, right? Back All this again. training and being front of and and being open to like these new ideas and, and getting in front of people. And you and have so, to try it. I mean, you just have to get out there. Not everything is going to work, but you don't know if it's going to work if you don't try it. Right. And we just have to get out there and kind of get out of our comfort zone and and just you know just get comfortable in your own skin especially with video people a lot of them are really uncomfortable with that and again it's okay you're not the only one that's uncomfortable with that so uh you just got to keep it's just practice and just doing it and doing it with a partner and that's yeah. and that's what you know i i told ruth she would have should have started her show years ago and you know that's why we teamed up is sometimes <laughs> if you get a partner you know, if you're a real estate agent that you're concerned about getting video, reach out to a person like Marie, you know, reach out to a, a partner, you know, one of your, you know, appraisers or, or, right. you know, home inspection people and stuff like that and partner up. You don't have to do this alone. Right. No, no, no. And it's almost more fun if you get more people to do it too. And I can tell you right now, I saw a realtor. Um, I don't know if he watches the show, but he was a credit guy. He's in Colorado now, mm -hmm. but now he's doing some of the things that Ruth, you and I talk about, right? Going out into the community in the local businesses, yes. doing like interviews with the business owners, right. getting their history, right? Come visit. I mean, especially now in this time, I can tell you, you're going to build a lot of goodwill with a lot of people because a lot of businesses are struggling right now. Yeah. You know, a lot of people and the community wants to support these small businesses. And if you become the channel and the the conduit to introduce these people and getting out there it it serves you in so many ways to integrate yourself into the community and build credibility that you can't even you can't monetize it quite yet the return on you know investment is it's difficult to calculate but and i can it, tell you and yeah. it's a win-win when you go out to a you know like if i went down to mastriani's restaurant down the street here and i said pete you know how are things going and i did a live video and then i then i said you know can i share this to, onto your page well guess what he's going to then share that to his friends exactly right and so it's a win-win he's well, getting no, you know you're sharing and he's sharing and I, you both are in different industries it's mm -hmm. just such a it's it's like a no-brainer you guys you got to go out and do it but you just have to do it well, I we, think Maggie said do that. It. we had talked in the past about doing neighborhood facebook pages you know if you're going to market in, in a neighborhood um yeah. create a neighborhood facebook page you can go to the businesses in that neighborhood and say hey you want to advertise on my page, like my page, offer some exactly. different to the people in the neighborhood. It's free advertising for them on your Facebook page. So they'll do it in a hot minute. Oh, um, and then you're offering something to the people in that neighborhood. So right. it's, it's yes, getting involved in the community. So people know who you are, the small mom and pops. We got a lot of small mom and pop realtor brokerages. And so, you know, yeah. you got to support them all. So yes. Um, it's just like you guys said, people just have to know who you are and being a secret agent and going to get it done. <laughs> now, no. And you know what's, what's wonderful, and, and you both have said this, but I'm going to repeat it. When people see you and you're talking to someone, they get a sense of whether they want to do business with you or not. And they're not going to forget that. They're not going to forget if they don't want to do business with you and they're not going to forget if they do. And mm -hmm. if you can just if you reach enough people, there's going to be enough people that want to. And people are afraid that people aren't going to like them. Well, nobody, not everybody is going to like you. 
<laughs> Get yeah. over it. <laughs> right. We got to wake up to that reality. But there's enough business out there. So, you know, the, 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 you know, the people that maybe you just aren't going to mesh with, move on down the road. You know, there's enough business out there. You just have to try to go get it. And the and consistency with myself, consistency with, with the Realtors, that really is a huge thing too. And so if you're really going to jump in someplace, you need to jump in there and be very consistent with what you're going to do in there because consumers are pretty used to getting one piece of material from somebody and then they never hear from them. Like, yeah. So, um, <laughs> So I've been doing a branding on my dailies. Uh, I think I'm up to, to class number five. So I've got a, a, so far done four brandings on my dailies to show people how you brand and how you start. And the, mm -hmm. and the best way to start is to become self-aware. And I have 26 questions that they need to ask themselves so that they can understand how they should create their style. Because once you go out there, you should have some consistency to your point, Marie. But so you should, ha it takes a little homework, but it only takes a couple days. And mm -hmm. once you go through my exercises, then you're ready to go out there and be consistent because you're going to schedule and you're going to already have what you're going to talk about. And yep. right now there's so many things to talk about and so many things to offer people, you know, it, it's, it's, it couldn't be a better time. No, and we're going into fall. So the weather is going to be a little nicer for people that are out walking. People will be out in their yards doing some yard work. So just a perfect time to be very sincere and very warm and just have a conversation. Yes, that too. And absolutely. 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 And people need to brand themselves. And it's so important. And um, and I, I can't get off my soapbox about this. Mm -hmm. This is why the iBuyer platforms are after us, everybody. We have a $68 billion industry. So if we're not in front of people, if, and our stat says 65 to 85% of the people who will do business with you are people that you know or people who can choose you. If you're not in front of the people that know you, they think you're out of business and they're going to choose Zillow or Open Door or OfferPad or someone else. And if you're not in front of the people that don't know you, they can't choose you. Right. And it's a $68 billion industry annually. And that's why we are getting plummeted by the iBuyer platforms and Zillow is going after our business. And so, Marie, to your point, I mean, these new agents need to take your classes, watch your videos and get comfortable with networking and connecting and, and max the video texting I I mean, this is what we have to do to save our industry. And I've, uh, I've been very passionate about that lately right. because I see what they're doing and what uh, Richard Barton said on, M on MNBC. He said, I'm going to do to real estate what, I, what Netflix did to Blockbuster and what my company Expedia did to the travel agencies and the reservationists. That's, mm -hmm. his, that's, his, that's what his goal is. Right, to, right. Yeah. So, and I... Uh, and I'm working with some people right now, Marie, uh, to um, figure out how we can get our LVR to uh, get stop giving our listings to Zillow. Mm -hmm. And there's a great following for that, by the way. Right. But anyway, I digress. Sorry. <laughs> That's well, another show. That's uh, another show. Yeah. What affects you guys affects us. And so we're all in this together, you know, not being able to see agents, not being able to see the consumer. So we all just need to kind of work with each other, figure out how we can do what we're doing, get out of the box a little bit, you know, thankful for you, Ruth, that you're kind of not maybe spearheading, but there's a group of people that are trying to look out for our realtors and the new ones coming in. And so yep. appreciate that. All right. So, so you, yeah. I mean, so Marie, you, you have to, you have a 10 o'clock and we want to be respectful of your time. So you're not late there. Thank you. uh, yeah. Just because you're virtual doesn't mean you need to sh can show up late. Just a reminder for everybody there. Uh, well, but, she's uh, a good rate. So she wants to get signed today. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, so it's such, so great to see you again. And, and yes. I want to thank you again for, you know, coming on to my YouTube channel four years ago. <laughs> so you said, Here we are four years later. Right. <laughs> and always thank you so much, Ruth. I appreciate you. Oh, I appreciate you too, Marie. And we'll get together and then perhaps you can come to my training center and do a class. Absolutely. would love to. So when is the next training, Ruth? Well, let me, uh, let me just put this on. Let's see if we can get this. Um, I'm going to hide myself. So it's um, equityenv.com, right, Marie? Correct. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to post that in the comments so people have it as well. 
And 702-203-3518. You got it. Got it. So the next class is the 13th from 10 to 1. And um, it is uh, on the calendar at BE.Vegas. Um, and it's cybersecurity, which is a very important. Uh, that's not big enough to see. But it's a very important class for all real estate agents to take because cyber hackers are on the rise. And next, and uh, I am trying to get everybody to get cyber insurance because of how they're hacking real estate agents activities and uh, who they're working with and um, really hurting the consumers. And so if you've got your cybersecurity insurance and you also have your designation in cybersecurity, which we're offering as well, then you stand out ab above the crowd, which, you know, I always say everybody should do. And right. The cybersecurity class, 10 to 1, sign up at BEE.Vegas. It's it's Thursday, uh, the 13th. And uh, you can come to the classroom, but you have to call us because we can only take a limited number in the classroom. But you can also Zoom in. And like I said, we usually have up to 60, 70 people um, on these classes, and, and they're excellent. Um, Jack Lindbergh is doing this class, and we are in the process of becoming – uh, a part of the, uh, I guess I already am a part of the committee for the cybersecurity with the real estate division. And we have uh, partnered up with a detective here in town who is in charge. Uh, he, I think he works with the FBI on cybersecurity and we're going to have him on our show, Max, by the way, he Fantastic. couldn't, yeah, I'm waiting for him to get approved. He's got to <laughs> go through channels, but, right. but it's a big issue. I mean, and, and next year, it, you know, there's going to, it's the, the numbers are staggering to how much money these hackers are going to get and how they, when you come to class and learn how they can find you and how they can stalk you and what you put online and how they can, I mean, if you put a picture of, of your house, I won't even go into it, Max, because I know we're going to run out of daylight. Marie has to go, but you guys come to the class and sign up at BEE.Vegas. And we also have the rest of the month, we have four core CE and contracts law agency and ethics. Check out the calendar. All the dates and times are there and join us uh, in the classroom or Zoom in. Right. And one more real quick thing about that. We just, I think we're working with the same detective. We just had a webinar on Wednesday with a detective here. There was recently um, a, a case of $5 million. The hacker right. accepted wow. the payoff demand. Was that Jeffrey? Is his name Jeffrey? Uh, might have been, I can't remember what his yeah. name called him detective by his last name. So I'm not sure about the first name, um, but it was an older woman's bank account, but she met a man online and he told her he was getting an inheritance, but he was having some problems with his bank. And would he mind if they used her bank in order for that money to come into? And so um, it was about $5 million. Um, and when it hit the bank, um, the detectives were on it. They notified her. She was mortified. She went straight to the bank, signed over the monies to be released back to that title company so that they could then make that um, make that correct payment. Um, but they're even getting so clever now as to be able to copy your voice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's yeah. You, so, anybody, so. anybody and everybody should take those classes and be very wary. And that insurance, Ruth, you, because when it does happen, a lot of times your bank's not there to give that money back. And so they're going to go after anybody they can that might have had any kind of, you know, ability to have their information hacked. So. Well, right now, I, 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 I know that the agents aren't going to get it. So I've got it for our company and yep. that covers the agents. And so it's it's expensive for a broker, but it's it's not it's that expensive. And NAR's, NAR's offering it to the agents. So it's anyway. so based off of what you might have to pay if you don't have it. So. All right. Yeah. Exactly yeah. right. And, I, uh, and Diana said, like, she highly recommends the class. She took it. It is, uh, it is, a, it's just amazing what you don't know. And then and you find out. <laughs> hackers are getting smarter and smarter. So just because you took a class six months ago in it, they've already, they've surpassed it out, right? other stuff now. So always stay up on that. That's important. Absolutely. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you again, Marie, for coming Thank on. You. Ruth? Any last words? Uh, well, I, I, I tend to have um, a little uh, motto here. I'm trying to spread the love. Just spread love, everybody. Spread we're in a love. we're we're in a, a world today where we need uh, we need love, empathy, and uh, we need nonconformity. Yes. We need to maintain our diversity. So. And critical thinking skills. Yes. So. Yes. So yes. I love everybody. Thank you for joining us. 
Uh, Have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye. And see Ruth tomorrow at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Thank you.